Hawaii has some of the best weather in the world for biking and it's often mentioned that why aren't more people out riding bikes and throughout the years I've seen a lot of frustration not only with our traffic patterns but even injury and death of people who have been able to really enjoy not only their commute to work but also their leisure time in riding bikes. So today I brought together a group of bike enthusiasts and also commuters who really are out there and wanting to get your guys opinion about you know what are we doing in Hawaii to really help everyone enjoy bike riding whether it's to work or throughout uh, just their leisure time so I brought together Georgie Hello. and Brian how you doing and Christian they do a lot of riding all over the island, so they sort of really understand the pattern of where the safe area is, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And unfortunately, one of the other things I brought you folks to talk about was uh, one of their friends that passed away, um, Zachary Monago, in 2010, unfortunately was hit while he was out riding his bike and really trying to enjoy what inspires him, which is bike riding. So I really want to thank you folks for coming down and hooking up with me. Oh, thank no you. problem. What's some of the things you want people to know about bike riding? Bike riding in Hawaii and in general is just a beautiful way to get around. You get plenty of fresh air, uh, save money on gas, you don't have to worry about parking. Uh, it's just a lot of fun and it should be use more pond in Hawaii because it's such a flat area we get beautiful weather um, you know almost all year round it's uh, it's just a shame that there's not as many bike lanes and um, everyone's not quite as aware of uh, bicycle safety and uh, how to approach bikes when they're either in their car or even when they're on their bikes as well you know everybody needs a lot of educating when it comes to cycling well that's really true Brian because I think a lot of times what I see is that we think it's all your responsibility as the bike rider you know and that we forget like I'm a driver I drive all the time and sometimes what I feel is there's no courtesy or understanding that the law is both ways that it's not only your responsibility but it's my responsibility does it make it harder for you when you're trying to drive through traffic it's tough because a lot of people my main commute is anywhere between Waikiki and the airport and a lot of the times I can get there just as fast or faster than a car by obeying the same laws and a lot of times cars see me on the road and even if I'm going just as fast as them they approach me in an overly aggressive manner because I'm on a bike they think they should be going faster because they're in a car but um, the lights are so close together in town that it's so much easier for me to ride my bike and not have to worry about parking rather than getting in my car and driving two miles and then circling the block ten times trying to find a parking space. So that's why I enjoy riding my bike because I save a lot of time and save a lot of money. And you would think with our economy right now and the price of gas, this would be a no-brainer. No Wouldn't you think that, George? That Yeah, um, I've been seeing a lot of people, um, you know, they live maybe four to five miles from work or even maybe up to 20 miles and, you know, Jumping on a bicycle saves you gas and just makes the commute a lot um, faster and as well as um, it's a lot healthier too. A lot of people, to, um, you know, not are the healthiest, but it's an easy sport and it's fast. Um, it's fast to do, you know, rather than driving a car. You know, a lot of people try to ride bikes with their family. And I know for myself, uh, throughout the years, I sort of stopped because, you know, there's a group of you trying to ride and maybe the first guy the second guy the cars will you know stop for you but what I experienced was my son there was three of us and no one wanted to wait we were crossing and we had the light and everything and the car in the right wanted to just turn and hit him and he was only like probably eight uh, eight years old uh, you know uh, that's how it should be where it's to the point where like a eight-year-old or even an 80 year old could do whatever they wanted to or like ride as far as they want, if as long as they're you know, healthy enough and preparing like the bike laws and all that. You know, I Same noticed time. you guys not only ride to and from work, but you also ride in the evening. What what are the challenges with trying to ride in the evening? 
You have to be well prepared throughout the evening. You have to have a good light set up. You want to be. You want drivers to notice you. Um, at the best of times, drivers uh, have a hard time seeing us just because we're a lot smaller than any type of car that's out there. Um, a good rear light and a good front light is always a good option. Uh, obviously, wearing a helmet is good too. And there's no restrictions. See, a lot of people think, and what I heard, you know, unfortunately, like with in Zach's case when he passed away, that they actually commented that, well, he chose because he chose to write at night. He chose his own death. And I thought that's so wrong that mm -hmm. you know there's no laws against riding bikes in the evening. Yeah. You know when it's dark. Yeah, some people enjoy it. You know, it's a lot cooler. There's less road, less cars out there on the road. So, you know, sometimes some people might take it differently, but. That's like almost like saying that, you know, cars shouldn't be allowed to drive in the evening. It's kind of crazy. You know, we're expected to be, treat each other the same on the road. And then when, uh, you know, tragedies unfold like that, it's, it's easy to blame, you know, a cyclist. And a lot of times, that's, that's what's frustrating. It's always the victim that gets the bad rap. You know, well, he shouldn't have been out riding his bike. No, like you said, you know, everyone has a right to be out there on the road. And so what do you think would really help to, uh, bring more awareness of that it is everybody's, you know, uh, give and take to make sure that you folks can ride bike or I could ride my bike. There should be, you know, maybe commercials or something to inform the public ab about, you know, bicycles and let, you know, people who are driving know that, you know, we have a right to be on the street. You know, like I have people yell at me, tell me get off the road. And they expect me to be on the sidewalk, and sometimes we ride on the sidewalk just to get around. Something. Is that safer? Uh, but you know, you can't be on the sidewalk either. So it's like, where do they expect us to be? You know, and like, where where your kids walking, where your grandparents are walking, instead of where you're driving. So. And Honolulu is a busy place. There's always, you know, if you're out on the sidewalk, there's always doors opening and businesses and people walking in and out and cars pulling in and out. It's uh, once you get used to riding on the road, it's a lot safer than being on the sidewalk. But at the same time. If drivers and, and cyclists as well are not aware of the risks involved in riding on the road, it can be just as, you know, just as dangerous out there too. I think uh, educating drivers and cyclists alike and making it a lot more public would be a great first step. I don't necessarily think that putting bike lanes in immediately without the knowledge and education is mm -hmm. necessarily the best way to do it, even though we'd all love um, more bike lanes out here. <laughs> George, you know, you work down at uh, one of the bike shops and uh, all of you folks ride in different groups. What are some of the things you see and would like to see out there? Um, what do you mean? Sorry. Or as far as making it easier for you to do what you love, riding your bike? Um, I think we should have like there's a lot of people that ride in groups and stuff and we always have our own rides and there's other people that ride in their own groups like you know road bike guys and they got guys in town and it would be doing in cruisers now um, so I want you know more people to kind of know how to come across them on the road and I know sometimes you know even the cyclists are not educated and mm. that's something that they have to um, be more aware of and people you know help out people to explain to them that you know Ride aloha, drive aloha. You know, if you want respect, you're gonna have to show drivers respect and, you know, not be too uh, swiggly in the, the lanes and stuff like that. So that way, the drivers won't get mad at you and stuff like that. So, I think um, all of us just need to be a little educated and show respect for one another. Yeah. And I yeah. noticed, like, when you guys do, uh, I met up with your group on the Tuesday night ride, and I think you guys could say TR. TR. TNR. TNR. <laughs> TNR. So uh, I was sort of surprised, though, at how many people sort of have given you guys a bad stigma of, well, what are you doing here and why are you congregating? And, and you know, I was a little offset. It, it offended me because clearly you guys are getting together to do something that's healthy for you, and it's a great group effort. And, and the camaraderie, I mean, the friendships, I could see it. And so I was really taken back the aggression you guys get when you're trying to get together, you know, you're chased off at different venues. How's that feel? What What's going on with that? Uh, I think a lot of when youth gather, I think, you know, authority kind of gets a little, you know, pushy with that. But 
It's kind of silly just because, you know, it's supposed to be a community and we're, we're giving back to the community too. We're not just, you know, loitering out in front of businesses right. or anything like mm -hmm. that. We're giving it to them too. And we're, you know, and it sounds like we're, you know, giving drivers a bad rap and they're not all bad. A lot of people do drive with Aloha yeah. and ride with Aloha. Um, and there's a lot of people that are in awe of us too. You know, they see us flying, you know, flying down the road at, at night, you know, on, our, on the side of the road. And uh, a lot of people are interested and they want to know what's going on. And I think uh, getting more people out there on bikes in numbers really helps um, is one of the biggest steps we can do to uh, promote cycling in Hawaii. Yeah. Well, and I would really like to see where the community understands, whether it's McDonald's or down the earth or, you know, at the shopping malls, that, you know, it's a healthy gathering, you know. And so that's why I said it really bothered me because... Here you guys are coming together to do something healthy, and yet you're chased off, even though a lot of times you're actually there buying stuff from these vendors. And then they're turning around chasing you guys off, and yet I can see a group of cars rallying at McDonald's and nobody bothers them, right, whether it's a bunch of old cars. And, and so I just sort of wanted to talk about that because I think everybody has a right to be out there in the community. And, and why are we called the Aloha State if we're not really giving that Aloha? Mm -hmm. You know, and when, to me, the courage you folks have to continue to do what you guys do, and, uh, you know, that expression, I, to me, I, I just think that needs to be talked about, that, you know, everyone has a right to, to pursue what they enjoy. You know, we're supposed to be America. It's supposed to be democratic. And... You know, if you can't even get out there and ride your bike freely, then, you know, sort of what are we coming to, you know? Sure. So, what's next? You guys talked about some of the upcoming events. What's some of the things coming up in, that people can maybe start to learn about bike riding and join the group? One of the biggest events that we started last year um, is uh, Zach's Ride in Paradise. And uh, that's coming up in July. It'll be on the 7th and 8th. Um, it's two days of a giant group ride that's uh, promoting cycling and uh, biking awareness, you know, biking safety, cycling safety. Uh, the first day we're going to go start at Zach's uh, memorial spot in Waiwa and make our way up around Kayana Point and come back down uh, to the state capitol. That's how we finished last year. I'm pretty sure the route's fairly same. And, and for a lot of people, if you just joined us, Zach actually um, was killed on his bike. It was a hit-and-run accident in December 2010? Yeah, mm -hmm. December 17th, I believe it was. So this will be the second annual marking, bringing together group for Zach. Yeah. Last year was kind of a test run, but we had a huge turnout. You know, we had guys on uh, track bikes, we had guys on road bikes, guys on mountain bikes, young and old. Uh, just sticking together and uh, making a good trek around the uh, island for two days. Yeah, that was wow. amazing. You know, I heard he actually was writing his thesis on bike safety. Me and Zach, uh, I met, Zach was actually the first kid I ever met on the island. Me and him played baseball together at HPU, and uh, he showed up to practice on his bike one day, and then uh, the rest is history, but he uh, really got into it uh, very quickly and had a very large passion for it, you know, baseball as well as cycling. And uh, just before he passed, he had written a, uh, it was like a final, final term paper about um, how he wanted uh, Hawaii to really sp to spread cycling and be more aware of cyclists on the road and to have more opportunities for cyclists to be out there and do their thing without fear of, um, without fear of being injured. Yeah, I think it says a lot that, you know, it, it's a subject that I think needs to be brought out, not only, um, you know, with younger kids that are wanting, wanting to be bike riders. You know, what's some of the things you would recommend if um, you have some kids that want to start jumping on their bike? What's some safety things they should know? I would say riding with a group really is a good idea, especially when you're going to start off riding on the road. Uh, it really gets you comfortable, you know, and you see what the – not veterans, but what the people who are riding more than you did, you know, what their, what their tactics are and all of that. But uh, especially knowing what your bike is capable of, you know, your equipment, mm -hmm. lights, helmets, like he, Brian said. Um, yeah. And safety in numbers is a big thing, too. I mean, you get more 
comfortable, you're around people that are doing the same thing, but also the cars and drivers give you a lot more respect when you're in more numbers. If it's, it's really easy to whiz by one cyclist and fear, you know, just to get by them really quick, but if there's a, if there's a group of them, then um, not necessarily slowing traffic down, but they, you know, people look and gain a little bit more respect um, for what we're out there doing. So us being more conscious as drivers and then also for bikes, you guys have to sort of be real vigilant when you're out there. You know, um, what about requirements? Um, you know, does everybody need to have a helmet or what? It, what is the... There's no helmet law in Hawaii. You're allowed to ride a moped, motorcycle, bicycle uh, without a helmet. But uh, I've ridden, I've done a lot of commuting in between Waikiki and the airport area and even over to Aiea. And uh, it just makes me feel a little bit better uh, if anything were to happen to wear a lid. Uh, the only other law I can think of is that uh, at night you're required to run a front light and a rear reflector. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's always a good idea to have a really bright rear light as well because you can see what's going on in front of you. It's the drivers that are coming up behind you that um, I'm worried about. And then I think on the road you have to follow the same rules basically as cars or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. stop at lights and all that, yeah. especially. Wow. You don't realize, you know, when you're out there, um, like I'm in Pearl City, so we have the bike path. So it helps a little, but it's like when I try to get off the bike path, like I would love to drive down here to Olelo, but I just don't feel safe enough yet. Yeah, you once know? it cuts off. That's the thing too, From, I think when it was first made, it could actually take you from um, safely from Eva Beach all the way around Pearl Harbor, and it'll even take you closer to Arizona Memorial where you come out and you're on Cam Highway and you're still on a bike lane. But now, you know, this, you know, you have to And is there it. any bike paths at all down to the west side? Um, the bike path starts pretty much um, from Waipahu. There's like a dump yard in the back. Um, it's right down the street from Farrington Depot Highway. Depot Street. Yeah, Depot Street. And it pretty much starts there and goes all the way to Arizona, just like Christian explained. And um, pretty much if it's the safest route to go, if you want to head, you know, travel on the west side. I know it doesn't go all the way down to... Um, Know, like why and I and all that mm -hmm. side but um if you know like certain back roads and which sidewalks to go on you pretty much will get there safely without um, being bothered by cars at all yeah. okay so there is ways to go down the Waianae because I actually know a couple people that try to commute that actually work in town and some of them are TV people that ride bikes all the way to Waianae yeah. I think from Depot Street you cut through you can cut through um, you know instead of going on the highway you can cut through the industrial area and then through their apartments um, in lower Waipahu, like Pupole and all that. Mm -hmm. um, then you can link up with Eva Beach. A safe way to get through before, you know, people used to take um, Farrington, but Farrington Bar is out to yeah, Point. super dangerous. So nowadays we take like, um, what is that? Geiger? Not Geiger. So you go down through the back of Barber's Point? No, we just go Rent, down Eva Renton and turn. Road. Yeah, Renton. Renton. Yeah, Renton goes all the way through in Kapole. You know, you got to give it up to Kapolei because Kapolei has huge bike lanes. You know, it's probably one of the most bicycle safety so cities. So they sort of thought of it when they built the infrastructure yeah. there. But I think from Kapolei to um, Koalina already, you're pretty much pushing it already. It's like you're on the side of the highway. People are flying past you. Like, you know. And we've actually, I'm surprised, there's been a lot of hit and bicycle accidents down in the Waianae area so I don't understand why there aren't any bike paths down there designated somehow. Yeah a lot of people ride a bike over there too. What's some of the best <laughs> places you guys like to ride? One of the most frequent w rides we do um, if we're trying to do distance would be to go out uh, Hawaii Highway from uh, Waikiki go around the front of Diamond Head and then head out on 72 right where H1 finishes and jump on the highway because it's not necessarily a bike lane but the shoulder opens up really wide um, it's a popular cycling uh, cycling area. Go out and go to uh, Makapu and then head out to Sandy's and loop back around. Um, it's nice out there because the traffic dies down a little bit. Plus, you have a lot of uh, wide road to ride on, which is nice. About how long does it take you to get out that side? That's a good question. <laughs> Depends how good I'm feeling that day. Yeah. <laughs> but do you like bring water? Do I need to wear sunscreen or what? Some of the 
Uh, just kind of deal with it as you go by. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Stop somewhere to eat, visit. I'd probably be a it. wussy. Yeah. I'd bring water and have to wear sunscreen. And <laughs> water and sunscreen is never a bad idea. Okay. <laughs> What's some of the different kind of bikes? Because these are what? These are These are uh, track bikes, yeah, track fixed bike? gear. People mistake them for fixies. It's a trend going around where they convert a road bike to a, a single cog. But uh, these are designed to be on a track, which would be, you know, the most ultimate thing riding in Hawaii would be have a velodrome here. You know, yeah. they always talk about. What is it called? It's a velodrome. Like these are designed to be, you know, on a track, a uh, circular Simple. track. You know, so. <laughs> but that so would be the most some... awesome. And would that actually, <laughs> you think, draw tourism? I mean, sometimes we only think of. Yeah, and it's really good because it's sea level, you know, that's really Japan, good. Japan's right there, so I'm yeah. pretty sure a lot of those guys in Japan that do this kind of stuff would actually come to Hawaii and uh, maybe raise the tourism even more. Yeah. yeah, so we could actually put one down on Kalaleo, down yeah, by yeah, this yeah. point or something. Nice and flat over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Wow. So what would you guys like to see? What do you think the state should do? What should be the vision of biking? They should, I would say that they should focus more on that than, you know, other transportation, transporta yeah, transportation. things that a lot of money are going into, you know, and even if, you know, other things that, you know, <laughs> want to have an opinion on. Well, it's just like <laughs> rail scares me because yeah. when a uh, five point something billion dollar price tag and you got the feds only saying a couple million that they'll. Yeah, you, know, you can put a bike path it, underneath that scary. thing, a shaded bike path, you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. At 12 o'clock, the perfect shade just blocking <laughs> the bike path. <laughs> What's some other things you'd like to see happen with uh, um, bikes? Well, nonetheless, I mean, gas is just going up every year, and um, you never know if it's not going to drop or not. But cycling is always going to be, like, picking up. And people, you know, a lot of people out there, the economy is hard to, like, you know, deal with and stuff. So instead of getting a car, when we're on the island, we can pretty much uh, commute anywhere on a bike. So it's more practical for have you know, out of all the states, maybe at least this state help out a lot to just get um, more bike lanes. And I don't know. think electric cars is actually taking off as much as they yeah. hope. So maybe not just electric car stations to have some good areas for bikes. You know, so if you get a flat <coughs> or something, is there anything, anybody out there to help you or? You have to be really well prepared. Um, as a commuter, as a daily commuter, you don't want to be late to work, so you have to bring supplies with you, you know, carry a pump, an extra tube, um, tools to fix your fix your bike on the go. Um, Are there police or anybody to assist? You know how, like, they got tow trucks, right, that'll help? <laughs> Is there anybody out there that'll help the, bus, the bikers? If you the can bus, make it to yeah. a bus stop, it can take, what, three, three If they bikes. have, do they all have the rack on the front? Most of them yeah. have two. A lot of them do have three, like yeah. Christian just mentioned. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of them emergency call <laughs> a lot of them have bikes already on them so it's like yeah you know, even, wait even longer yeah, yeah it's hit and miss. miss with that too yeah. okay yeah. so even sort of the bus system doesn't quite have a, enough capability to really help yeah. with because yeah. there must be points where it just doesn't make sense to try to ride your bike you know where i mean i, I can't see anybody coming down h3 on a bike oh hmm. yeah yeah but there's ways that you can ride a bike through um Pali, you can ride a bike through Like Like, you can go through Kunia, YPO. There's other ways to get there. But honestly, I'd say if you live, you know, North Shore and you work in Honolulu, or if you live in Waianae and you work in Honolulu, you know, I gotta <laughs> say that's a hard ride to do every day. And you don't necessarily have to <laughs> do that ride every day, but just little steps. Getting someone out on a bike maybe once a week. Yeah. You don't have to jump straight into commuting 20 miles a day. You know, you can throw your bike in your car, they make folding bikes that you can take and throw in your trunk. You can drive, you know, say you live in Kapolei and you work in here, you can drive over to, uh, you know, the end of Nimitz and then park yeah, your you car even, somewhere and then ride in the rest of the way. Or catch the bus up to the point where, you know, traffic starts getting congested, then get off, you know, so it makes it an easier ride. Maybe get off on top of a hill. <laughs> <laughs> and parking's usually cheaper outside of downtown and stuff like that too. You can save a, save a couple bucks here and there. and. One of the biggest things I enjoy about cycling is it's a huge stress reliever. I don't. It's a uh, very uh, liberating getting on your bike and well, being able to power your like, own way. I would think if you're sitting in front of a computer all day, to get out there and see that open space is probably really good for your eyes and your mind. To, yeah. You know that. That's why I really was sort of offended that uh, 
you know, when I seen you folks getting together and people are trying to chase you away, I'm like, wait a minute, you know, you guys don't deserve that bad rap, you know, and that's why I wanted to bring you folks in and really talk to you because I think the community needs to do more to make it bike friendly, not only on the streets, but, you know, so you guys have areas when you're congregating, you're not just chased off and treated like criminals. I mean, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, what are we doing to our young people that, you know, we're bitching at them, you know? <laughs> They're saying health care, we need to take care of our health care. Well, if you're out riding your bike, you are trying to take better care of your health, mm -hmm. you know? And like you said, it's, it's good for your mind. That's also been a huge uh, problem as of late is childhood obesity and then uh, we're trying to get options to get kids out there more and parents don't want to let their kids it's ride anywhere. It's dangerous. It's scary. Yeah. It's dangerous. It's intimidating if you're out there and, you're, and you just want to get into it and uh, it is a very scary thought but uh, with more education just opportunities to ride in more bike lanes would be a, would be a huge step forward. So a big campaign to sort of push and, and really get everybody to understand that biking is just as vital and it's so good for your health, you know, mm -hmm. that, and we live in one of the best states ever. So any last minute thoughts, Georgie? Um, I think as long as we all pretty much work together and understand maybe like on the, on if they have it on the driving test, it's required to know like, you know, cycling laws that that way they respect more cyclists on the road and pretty much won't have any issues. But it's always, you know, the person's responsibility, the driver, and as well as the rider. So just make sure, you know, you're doing the, the right thing and, you know, show respect for other people you need your respect back. Mm. Yeah, just like you said, it sounds cheesy, but, you know, treat others like you, you want to be treated. It goes for, you know, riding bikes and driving cars. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have faith in uh, Honolulu and Oahu that, you know, people are going to realize sooner or later that, you know, a bike, it's just an island, you know. So a bike is a really easy way to get around. It's fun and healthy. And so the ride for uh, Zachary is June 7th and 8th? 7th and 8th, yeah. Okay. And um, I think it's a good tribute and a good reminder to us all that, you know, we should really try and stay safe. If anyone wants to get a hold of you guys or follow what you're doing, what's the best way? Probably just try to come out to a Tuesday night ride. We, have it. we meet at Bed Bath & Beyond on uh, Tuesday nights from 7.30 and we leave at about 8 o'clock. And that's in Pur Ridge? Pur Ridge, yeah. Okay. And hopefully that'll start to be a nice congregation area for you guys where you're not chased off. Yeah. If it gets too big, we might change location. So it's good to come early. Come now. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to thank you folks for all coming in, and good luck on your bike riding. All right. No worries. Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was perfect timing. <laughs>